Hey you guys, what is up? It is me, that little kid you used to bully in third grade because he ran like Naruto. I am all grown up and I now go by Arya J. And I am here to talk to you guys about RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star Season 5. So if you guys wanna hear my thoughts and my opinions and what I have to say about this week's episode, go ahead and subscribe, stay tuned, give me a follow and stick around. Um, if you don't wanna hear about it, bye, you can go. <laughs> Coming off of last week, all the girls come back into the workroom. Derek Barry is now gone. Hasta la vista, baby, boom, boom, bye. Everybody voted him out, actually, T because we come to find out that not everybody voted for Derek Barry, you guys. Juju B voted for Mayhem Miller. And so that comes up in a conversation. And Mayhem is pretty tight about it. She's pretty pissed off, you know? She feels like, girl, we've been friends for years. Like, you've seen what I can do. But Juju B is ranking it off of last week's performance and that alone. And Juju B thinks, well, Derek gave a little bit more. You know, at least Derek fumbled for three minutes of unfunny material, girl. Like, you were just fumbling. You know, you didn't know the words. Yikes. Boom. So we come in, we start a brand new day in the workroom. Everyone is gathered around the table and Cracker needs to get everybody's attention. She needs to make an announcement, everybody, because Cracker feels, you know, she tells everybody in the group, she was up all night, girl. She could not get a wink of sleep. She was tossing and a turning in her little hotel bedroom because she felt that she should have actually grabbed a whiteout girl and written on Gina's name on the lipstick because that's how bad Cracker felt that Angina did in last week's challenge because she feels Angina did not carry herself like an all-star should. Cracker's not wrong. You know, Angina was very down on herself last week. That's not very all-star-ish. You know, you need to be confident, girl. Like, you had 11 years to prepare for this. Where's it at? Where's it at? But Cracker is not the person to deliver that message at all because we've seen Cracker's seasons, you know, uh, old girl was like real insecure about everything. Like she's always trying to be prim and proper. Um, so it's weird that she felt the need to speak up uh, that uh, strongly against somebody else's performance who was not in the bottom. But go off girl, speak your mind. <laughs> so you guys, RuPaul enters the workroom to let the girls know that for their challenge this week, they are going to have to write their own original verses and come up with their own choreography for the Secret Celebrity Crush musical. Now, when I hear they're doing a celebrity crush sing-along, my first thought is I would want to do Wilmer Valderrama. Um, he played Fez in that 70s show. Um, he's the voice of Handy Manny. He does like a whole bunch of acting. He also dated Demi Lovato for like five, six years. Um, and he's so fucking hot. Oh my god. Oh, also, he used to host Yo Mama. Like, I don't know if you guys remember that show, but it would be like, hey, like, Yo Mama's so fat, she has to use the equator as a bell. Oh, Yo Mama. And then, like, the other dude would be like, hey, Yo Mama's so fat that she has to use a VCR as a beeper. Oh, Yo Mama. Um, it was a good show. He would be my celebrity crush. I think it's a pretty cute idea. He decides to break them up into groups by asking India Farah who she thinks her biggest competition is. India Farah decides to tell RuPaul that she thinks her biggest competition is Shea Coulee and Blair St. Clair. I don't see it. I don't see it. But that's her answer. So RuPaul decides to make those three the team captains for this week. They break up into teams and they start beginning writing their verses about their secret celebrity crushes. After they get done writing their music, they go ahead and they get into the recording session where they start recording their verses. And girl, it's wild. It's, it's, it's interesting to say the least. So the first group to record is India Farah, Alexis Mateo, and Ju Ju B. 
Juju B decides to dedicate her verses to John Stamos from Full House. He's fucking hot. Like Uncle Jesse? Yeah. Alexis Mateo decides to go with Daddy Yankee, who she, for some reason, keeps pronouncing Daddy Junkie. And it's my favorite thing about this whole fucking episode. <laughs> India Fair decides to do Justin Timberlake, but she's like bombing it. Like she's not, her lyrics aren't really that clever. Like she had so much she could have done. Like he was like in Backstreet Boys or NSYNC or something, girl. So she, like she could have played off of that. Like I felt like there was a lot more she could have done there but she did fine. The second team to enter the workroom is comprised of Blair St. Clair, Ms. Cracker, and Mayhem Miller. I guess Blair has like a bop or two out. I have not heard them, but I guess she is a singer. I guess. Good for her. Blair St. Clair kicks it off and she has decided to choose her celebrity crush to be Hannibal Lecter. I think she was trying to be like funny and goofy and silly. Um, it's out the box for her. I thought it was a good idea to like experiment with something different there. Um, Cause that, I, I would not expect that from her. You know, that would be the last thing I would expect. So good job with that choice Blair. <laughs> but as soon as Blair starts recording, it is like a deer in headlights. She is shaking girl. She is trembling. Like literally the producer dude is telling her like, Okay, let's take a deep breath. And she's like, literally, I can't take deep breaths because I feel like I'm so hard on myself. And da da da, like, girl, you are imploding. Like, <sighs> she was stressing me out, girl. So she takes a few deep breaths and she ends up getting through it pretty nicely. Uh, she wraps it up and she comes through it on the other side looking just fine. Miss Cracker goes up and her celebrity crush is John Sylvester Stay. Stallone. From, like, the Rocky movies. Um, I thought that was pretty clever. Um, and of course, Cracker knocks it out the ballpark. Her lyrics, you know, about boxing are funny and she's cute right off the bat. She's giving us like fun, energetic vocals. So Cracker does really good right off the bat with this recording. Mayhem Miller decides to record her part and she has chosen Mr. Rogers. I think it's pretty funny, but as she's recording, like Cracker is like chiming in and like giving notes and speaking up. And like, once again, like Cracker is kind of like putting her foot in her mouth. Like, especially since this season seems to be about like the relationships that you make with your friends and like what's going on with this, you know, like building alliances. Cracker should be playing a lot nicer. Mayhem does pretty good, you know, cute little verses about Mr. Rogers. The final group recording today consists of Shea Coulee, Angina and Mariah Paris Balenciaga. Right off the bat, Shay Coule is killing it. Her lyrics are clean, they're precise. Nobody's surprised. Like this is what Shay does. Like she's a rapper, she's a singer. Shay does everything. Like, I mean, she blows it away. I think she does great. Her celebrity crush is Chadwick Boseman, the Black Panther. I think such an amazing choice. Have y'all seen that man? Oh my lord. After Shay goes on China, who has decided to do Henry Cavill. He plays Superman in the DC movies if you're not familiar with him. But on China is doing hard. Like she's sick apparently and her voice is all over the place. It's horrible. Like she tries to sing, just squeaks are coming out. She also had like no rhythm. She had like no beat. Like it wasn't good even if I think if she wasn't sick, but her being sick definitely did not help her case. And last for recording is Mariah Perez Balenciaga, who has decided to do Aquaman Jason Momoa. Unfortunately, she doesn't know how to say his name. Um, like she's stuttering over his name. It is kind of a difficult name to say really quickly. Uh, but you know, she pulls through, she gets her little part recorded and it's fine. So now that all the girls have their verses recorded, it's time for them to come up with their choreography. The first team to go is India Ferris' team. And right out the gate, girl, India Ferris, it's like Alexis Mateo, take over. Take these fucking reins, girl. Like, you lead the choreography. And Alexis Mateo was like, 
okay girl you know she starts giving them like a basic little like one two three four five six seven you know like she's putting it together you know like they're gonna cross over here and bam you know she's uh coming through for them you know they're working really well as a team they're all like laughing they're having a good time it looks like like i'm like i want to be on that team like they're working together really well um so they get their little choreography together and boom they're done after India's team finishes using the stage for their choreography, it's Shay's turn. So right out the bat, Shay comes out with her girls and they are getting it together. Shay is leading them with the cute little prance, 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 dance, ka. You know, Shay is like really serving it to the girl, you know, but we're not, once again, we're not surprised. It's Shay motherfucking Kule. She knows what she's doing. Mariah Paris is a great dancer. She's like following right along. She's turning it out, girl. And Angina, itty bitty little thing so fucking cute they're like lifting her up oh it's it's great like they're getting the choreography together they look like they're it's gonna kill it the last team to work on the choreography is blair st Clair's team they come out and blair's trying to you know lead the team a little bit but cracker is just you know chomping off at the mouth you know every other chance she gets she's talking over somebody she's throwing out unproductive things you know she's throwing pillows around with her choreography it's not looking cute girl she's stepping all over blair it's not really getting done and they're kind of like snapping at each other a little bit at this point it's great girl i'm living for it i'm like fight or hit her bitch swing somebody fucking swing bet you won't bitch no one did but Bitch, could you imagine Cracker? Or who would win? Cracker. I think Cracker would be Blair. Man's also not doing good in this situation. So bump, 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 bump. It's the next day in the workroom. Gag. So we come into the workroom and we come across Cracker and Blair having a conversation that literally go, you know, Cracker, I love you, but you can be a little bit different. No, that's complete garbage. So, you know, then we get into Cracker having her moment, you know, on screen of talking about people always kind of say she's difficult and she wishes that people would stop saying she's difficult because she doesn't really think that she's difficult and she wishes that they would see that she's not difficult because she's a nice person. And I feel that because sometimes people try to say that I'm a dick or that I'm a bitch. And I know that's not fucking true because I'm a I'm a nice, good fucking person. And if someone doesn't like me, they are usually the fucking problem. So I understand Cracker in that sense. So you guys, we are at the main stage and RuPaul comes out. I really like his hair this week. It's a really nice icy blonde that I think looks really, really good on him. But his makeup is the exact same makeup as last week like almost like brush for brush stroke. Like, so she comes out, her dress is fine. I really like the fabrics and the colors of the dress. I don't like how they're layered. It's kind of like a corset and then it's just fabric wrapped. Not for me, but I like it, but not for me. RuPaul comes out to introduce us to our guest judges, Tessa Thompson and Madison Bear. If you are not familiar with Tessa Thompson, she plays Valkyrie and the Marvel movies she is amazing she is gorgeous i love her and shea coule is doing like a marvel character but it did kind of upset me that shea coule like mixed marvel with dc i think instead of dc characters they should have done like hugh jackman from like x-men and like robert downey jr from iron man oh or chris hemsworth mm. Anyway, RuPaul goes ahead and he opens up the show. India Farrah's group comes out and they all look amazing. Um, they all have high, high, high energy, except India Farrah does kind of fall behind a little bit. Her lyrics don't really come through that strong compared to Jujubee's and um, Alexis Mateo's, but she doesn't do bad. I think she does pretty good. And their performance overall was really, really cute. I really enjoyed it. Blair St. Clair's group comes out and they all kill it. They all have high energy. They're all hitting their choreography. They're all hitting their marks. They all have really great looks. I was really surprised that it came together as well as it did. I thought it was gonna crumble a little bit, but it came out really nice for the group. And last but not least is Shea Coulee's performance. And 
I'm torn. Shea kool does amazing. Her, you know, verse about Chadwick Boseman is amazing. It's hip, it's fast, it's cute. You know, her look is amazing. Her choreography is great. You know, they lift on Gina up, but her verse isn't that great. Um, her outfit isn't that great. Um, oh, just saw. Uh, and then Mariah Paris is like doing the choreography and she's giving us splits and tricks, but she just looks bored. She seems bored the whole entire time. Oh. But Shay, Kelly, I'll Shay you mainly. Well, now that the Celebrity Crush musical is over, it is time for the runway, honey. And the category is skin, skin, <laughs> skin, honey, skin. Skin, do you know skin, skin, skin? The first queen out on the runway is India Farah. And this is a super soft two for me because this dress is okay, it's just fine. Um, but it looks like her it, it looks like almost like a swatch book of curtains. Like it looks like these are just curtains on my hip. And I get that the theme is like racial unity, but the dress itself is not cute. You know what, I'm gonna give it a boo. It's a boo. It's a boo for me. Next, we have Miss Jujubee coming out in this gorgeous, like pinkish, peachish tone dress, which looks really great on her skin tone. Her hair looks amazing. It looks like this, like, crafted tower ready to fall over, like, at any second. Like, any Whoville person would want to have this hairstyle. It's really cute. The cut of the front of her dress is a little weird. It could be like cut higher or it could be like cut lower, but it's kind of like at this weird like shin length. And so it's a toot for me, Um, but that we should do something in the future about that little in-between spot. I will say, I feel like this missed the challenge though. The dress itself is a toot, but I didn't get skin from this. Like I get I'm like, oh, it's my skin tone, but I didn't get skin from this. I feel like a lot of girls miss the mark on this challenge. I'm gonna say that. But this is a two. Up next, we have Alexis Mateo, and this to me is amazing. I love this look. The front of her gown gives me like pussy lips. Like, like I'm telling you, girl, like just fold, fold. And I like it. It's like leather, it's on her, it looks good, it's drag, it's pageant. Um, she has her loaf on top sitting just right. Her face is gorgeous. Um, I think she looks great. I think she looks really stunning. Blair St. Clair comes out and she is wearing this gorgeous head to toe pink look, except for her hair, which is like this cute yellow. It is cunt, it is chic. Everything on her is fitting perfect. The look is amazing. The makeup is blended and it's a waste because that was not the assignment, girl. The assignment was skin. The assignment wasn't pink. The assignment wasn't like, like latex leather. Like you missed the mark on this. I don't get, at one point she says like, oh, like it was skin tight, but like, girl, that's a reach. Such an amazing look, like from top to bottom. It's such a well executed look. It's a shame that it's just, it's not the category. It's not what the assignment was. Ms. Cracker comes out wearing this really cute tool number, except I fucking hate it. I love tool. I love the little cupcake part of her outfit. I love the train of the tool, but she has like this weird fucking tool square in her face. And the whole time she has her jaw peeking over it like this. So she looks really awkward the whole runway. And it just, it doesn't look good. It's too high, this front piece. It's a boot for me. I can't stand whatever's happening right here. It blocks like half her face. Um, and also her hair wasn't the best to me. I didn't like that dark hair on her. Ooh, boot for me. I'm sorry. So Maya Miller comes out on the runway and she comes out in like this Kim Kardashian-esque dress. And I get what she's trying to do. It's like supposed to be the nude illusion. It's like, oh, I'm wet. But her nude illusion does not match at all. Um, the jewels on it, like, look like beads. They're not nice. 
Her makeup looks great, her hair looks great. The cut of the dress at the bottom is really weird. Um, it's a boot for me. I've seen queens do this and execute it well, so I wish this would have been executed better by Mayhem because I've seen the look done well and I think it could have looked good on her, but this is a it. Shay Kool-Aid comes out and I'm gagged, honey. Like my jaw is on the fucking floor. She is like just stoned, head to toe, naked, like nipples, ass crack. Like, oh my God, she looks amazing. Just, oh, her hair, the neck piece, like it's just stunning. I feel like this, this is the, this is the challenge skin she gave us. Wow, she really blew me away. <laughs> I'll say it though, I feel like the tone of it is like a few shades off, like a shade or two lighter. So I wish the suit was a little bit darker, but wow, I'm so stunned by all of it. Um, Jenna comes out in this gown and I will say when I first saw the gown, I did not like it. I didn't care for the feathers. I didn't think it gave me the challenge, anything. She then goes on to explain how it's um, tied into her Filipino culture and how it represents a bird from a story in Filipino culture. Um, for me, it didn't do it. So this look is a boot for me. It like engulfs her. <laughs> the judges say it looks like a, a, a egg sitting in a nest and gag honey. Like what a read, what the, the accuracy of that read. Oh my God. It's like saying Aria J looks like a man in a wig. Ugh. Mariah Paris Balenciaga comes out and she looks gorgeous. Her face is beat and the word I feel like describes her is like effervescent. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Effervescent. Like she looks like a light airy, like she looks like a cloud coming down. I think she looks stunning, but I'll say same thing with Jujube. I feel like you missed the mark when it was skin. Like once again, I get skin tone, but it's like, you could do so much more. But she looks amazing. This is a two. She looks so good. Okay, you guys, now that the runways are done and the judges have given their critiques, we have found out that Alexis Mateo, Ms. Cracker, and Mayhem Miller are all safe. So we find out that the winner of this week's challenge is Shay motherfucking Kool-Aid. And rightfully so. I could have seen it going to Alexis Mateo as well, but I definitely think Shay deserves this. Um, but we do find out that Shay's team of Mariah Paris Balenciaga and Angina are in the bottom along with India Farah. Yikes. So now the girls have to go back and deliberate and find out who they're going to be voting for. So as soon as we get back into the workroom, Shea Coulee expresses that it's a very bittersweet moment for her because two thirds at the bottom are her team members and she feels kind of guilty for that. Um, so I think it's really cool that she's aware of that, you know, even within her own moment, she knows, I think she knows she did deserve to win, but it, it does suck when, you know, not everybody is up there with you. And then right after that, Angina gives up, bitch. Did you hear me? I said she gives up. Literally, she decides to give a speech and cries about how hard it's been for her so far. And then she gives up. She says there's no need for deliberation. She says that she thinks she should go home. That's tacky. That's tacky. I think it's so rude to go on a competition show and give up like that. Like at least right, right out the next 30 minutes. Just right out the next 30 minutes. You know what I mean? I don't know. The girls go ahead and it's time for them to deliberate and to choose their lipsticks. So they do. It is now time for us to meet our lip sync assassin for the week, girl. Shea Coulee is standing on stage in this cute green number. Love it. She's giving me superhero. She's giving me badass. And as the stage lights come up, honey, it is revealed to us that this week's lip sync assassin is Alyssa Edwards, the dancing queen of Texas. <gasps> Legendary. We love her. Um, but she looks very much like that girl from SNL with the tiny hands that has like the sisters and she does the songs and she, it, that's what she looks like tonight. The lip sync 
starts, honey. They lip sync to the Neutron Dance, which is a really cute little fucking number. And Jay bodies the shit out of it. She is giving us 110% energy. She is giving us moves I have never seen from her before. She is giving us up, down, left, right, kicks, splits, all of it. I was a bit confused from Alyssa Edwards because, you know, she gave us that fun Alyssa Edwards we know, you know, she went to the back of the stage and put her leg up and flipped her hair, you know, like, yay. Um, but I was expecting like tricks and kicks and flips, you know, but I mean, she has all that money now, girl. She, she said, fuck this $10,000, you know, I'm not trying to break a fucking hip, you know. Uh, so the judges decide that Shay Kool-Aid is this week's winner, meaning she wins a grand fucking prize of $20,000, which she totally fucking deserves. Um, feel free to send any of that my way. And it's so great. But with great power comes great responsibility. And Shay Kool-Aid has to now reveal the queen that she has chosen to go home. It's Angina, girl. She decided to send Angina home because Angina had already fucking given up. So Angina went home this week. And it turns out that all the other queens also voted for Angina to go home. It was unanimous. Um, I think it's unfortunate. Uh, uh, but you know, when you give up, you give up. So I guess we'll see what happens next week, you guys. <laughs> I really hope that you guys enjoyed my breakdown of this week's episode of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star Season 5, Episode 2. Um, if you didn't, you can eat my ass. Um, if you did, then go ahead and subscribe. Give me any likes that you want to leave any comments below. Uh, I would really love to hear from you guys. I would love to hear what you would like to see more of, where you think I can improve, anything. Go ahead and leave something below. Uh, and I'll see you bitches next week. Bye. <laughs>